Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about the squeezing rules in the game of Dungeons and Dragons 5e. If you have a look at the player's handbook on page 192, there is a section on squeezing into smaller spaces. A creature can squeeze through a space that is large enough for a creature one size smaller than it. Thus a large creature can squeeze through a passage that is only 5 foot wide. While squeezing through a space, a creature must spend one extra foot for every foot of movement that it uses. It also has disadvantage on attacks or dexterity saving throws if they are squeezed. Attack rolls against a creature that is squeezing have advantage while they are in a smaller space. So here's a quick example of the squeezing rules applied. We have the party, they have journeyed down into say a, a cellar area and um, they don't know it but there is an ogre over here and the ogre has two different locations it can move through. It has a double doors, double doors are here. Now it can move through the double doors with no problem and would not be squeezing so the squeezing rules would not apply here. But it also has the choice of moving through the single door. Single door here, which is only five foot wide. Uh, so there's one here, there's one here, and there's also one right there. So it decides that it's going to move through this door because it's an ogre and it's kind of dumb. Uh, so it moves through. Now, as it moves through that space, instead of each square representing five foot of movement like it would normally do, it actually has to spend more of its movement or speed to get through there. So as soon as it opens the door, when it moves through, it's not spending 5 foot of movement, it's spending 10 foot of movement. Because you have to double the amount of uh, movement needed to get through the space. While it stays in that location and it's squeezed in the doorway, it has disadvantage. So every time it tries to smack the fighter in the front here, you have to roll two dice and take the lowest result for your attack rolls when you're using yoga because the creature is squeezed. So if the ranger, the paladin, and the fighter move up to attack the ogre, they get to attack because the creature is squeezed with advantage. So roll two dice and take the highest result. The same thing applies to a medium-sized creature. If a creature is moving through a space that's smaller than uh, five foot and it's medium size, here's another very quick example of squeezing in action. Uh, say the party are making their way through a dungeon and they find a workshop and in that workshop there is a beholder. This beholder takes up 15 feet by 15 feet. It's a huge sized creature in this case and they decide that it's not a good idea to stay there and they run. And they flee down the passageway as best they can trying to escape the eye rays of this nasty creature or beastie. And as they do so the creature decides to follow them. Now, you'll notice that the space or passageway is only 10 feet wide, so it has to squeeze through that space. So as it moves through that space, it needs to expend twice as much of its speed or movement to get through that space. So for every 5 foot, it's actually 10 foot of movement. So that it would be 10, 20, 30, 40. It's going to be squeezed in the passageway. 50, 60, 70, okay, it's going to have to move quite slow to get through that space to get to them. But it can do so because it is only one size difference between its actual um, size category and the passageway itself. In any case, no matter what, it will still have disadvantage on its eye ray attacks against the, um, the player characters um, if they are ray attacks that require attack roll. If you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make a comment below if you have any questions regarding squeezing in the Dungeons and Dragons 5e rule set and I will do my best to answer those questions. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s.